Hello dental online trainers, Dr. Dennis Hartlieb here with another a clinical mini tip for you. Today on posterior composites. I recently got an email from one of our DOT users and it's a common question I get when I teach posterior composite techniques. The problem is when you have a deep interproximal caries or something that's subgingival, how do you manage that? So today I'm going to be sharing with you what I call the direct resin margin elevation technique. So I'm going to show you a case through some x-rays and then I'm going to use illustrations to show you how I would do this course, this type of technique because it's so, so difficult to be able to photograph this type of technique because as you know, it's very demanding. So let's walk through the technique. So this is my patient and if you take a look, you'll see there's some interproximal caries on the bicuspid on the distal right down in this zone and it's several millimeters below the soft tissue. And if you look at the previous restoration, it's probably about five to six millimeters beyond the um, cervical border of the previous restoration. Very, very, very difficult to manage both with an indirect restoration and especially with a direct restoration. So let me walk you through how I did it. So I'm gonna first start out, I'm gonna go in and remove part of the old um, existing restoration and I want to get to the point where I can find the, the new caries. So as I'm drilling, as you can imagine, it's very difficult to be able to see down in that area. So I thought I had gotten to the point where the caries was. I took a radiograph just to verify, and you can see that where my drilling stopped, I'm still not at the point of the caries yet. So I will caution you, if you're not quite certain, stop and get an um, inter-procedure radiograph just to verify that you're actually at that point where the caries are, because these are really difficult to be able to find. So I need to use a longer burr. I'm using a tapered diamond burr and I'm gonna go and so I can extend all the way till I get to that caries, curious area. I may need to use caries removal burrs, maybe be using diamond burrs, but at some point I have to make sure that I can get all the caries eliminated and I have a nice sealed cervical margin. Now the technique that I use to be able to create this type of restoration, you can see that it's starting out and sort of almost following the root contour before it starts to merge out and create that sub gingival emergence profile so I can get a really nice contour as it should follow the proximal wall contour that we would normally see with a bicuspid. Now again, very difficult for me to document this while I'm working on the patient. So I'm gonna use some illustrations and walk you through step-by-step -step how I do this. And again, take a look at the carries before we start and then the final restoration. All right, so with my illustrations, I'm gonna show there's some deep caries. I'm showing that in the yellow. The first thing I want you to do is I want you to use an oversized wedge. You really want to wedge in between these teeth because you want to do two things by wedging. The first purpose of the wedge is to compress the papilla, or if you're using a rubber dam, to push the rubber dam out of the way. We need to be able to get access to where that curious area is. I've got to, I have to get the papilla out, I have to get the rubber dam out of the way. The second thing I want to do by using this wedge, this oversized wedge, I want to start creating some restorative space, create room for my matrix band. So I'm going to wedge with significant pressure. So if you've taken my class two course, you'll know I tell the patients, I'm going to be placing a spacer between your teeth. I don't tell them I'm going to be using a wedge because that's kind of scary. So I say, I'm gonna be putting a spacer between your teeth and you're gonna feel some pressure, but it shouldn't hurt. And I slide it in and then I put a lot more pressure on there. This is a great way to make sure that your patient's actually anesthetized. So lots of pressure with this wedge, trying to gain some separation between the teeth. Typically, I'll start out with a uh, 330 carbide burr to start entrance into the, getting through the enamel or through the old restoration. And then I'll follow up with some sort of coarse diamond burr. With my goal in the, in the case that I showed you was to remove the pre-existing restoration and then also to get down to the point where the caries was. I will typically need to go in with a caries removal burr, like a number four and number six caries removal burr. Sometimes I have to use a surgical length caries removal burr because the caries are so far down that proximal root surface. But essentially, I want to get all those caries out. I may need to stop and take a radiograph to be certain that I've gotten all the caries out, that my birds have extended all the way down, and I want to be certain that I've gotten all the decay out. 
Now this is very, very difficult to do in the mouth, no doubt about it. But if we have a very conservative restoration, rather than having to prep the tooth for an onlay or a crown, this is, a, I think, a much better way to go. But we have to make sure we get the caries removed. So once I have the caries removed and I have my cavity preparation complete, I'm going to go ahead and take out that wedge. Now when we take out the wedge, there's going to be a bit of bleeding. That's normal, so we want to rinse it out. Now the most difficult part I think of the procedure is we need to get a metal matrix band to get down beyond where that cervical wall is or that cervical box. So I will use something either, it may be a circumferential band, it could be a tophlemire, it could be a circumferential, it may be um, uh, just a simple contour um, metal band but I need something that is metal because I want it to slide down between the tooth preparation and the gum tissue. So I need to get it all the way down. It needs to go beyond where that preparation is. So I am not worried about the contour of the band. I want to, my only concern with this first metal band is to be able to seal the gingival margin. Because whenever I do these type of techniques, it turns into be a two-step technique. So I don't ever try to create a seal down at the cervical margin and get a great proximal contact all in the same process. I'm gonna do it in two steps. The first step is let's build up the cervical floor to a more normal or ideal level. So I'm gonna place my metal band. I'm either gonna use little wedges or I'll use Teflon tape or sometimes I'll even use a cotton pellet that's been saturated in a composite adhesive. Place it into the, um, around the matrix and light cure that cotton pellet or use like my Teflon tape or my wedges. But the key is I have to seal the cervical margin. So down here it has to be absolutely sealed. So it may mean coming in from the palatal or the lingual and coming from the buccal. But again, I am not worried about getting a contact up at the proximal. I'm not worried about it at all. All I'm worried about is getting a cervical seal so I can build up that cervical box of the restoration. So ignore the proximal contact, ignore the proximal contour. You can see I'm using a very flat band because all I'm concerned about is this portion of the band right in here. I'm not worried about this portion of the band at all. I'll explain that in just a minute. Now what I find sometimes is when I put that matrix band in and I've got it sealed, I can go back and do a little bit more preparation because now it's easier to see down in there because everything's super sealed, everything's super clean, I got everything isolated. So I may go back and actually do a little more preparation. Once the preparation is complete and I have that matrix band, that metal matrix band and it's sealed at the cervical margin, I have a couple, a couple options for my elevated margin technique. The first option is I can use a glass ionomer or a resin ionomer for the first portion of what is called the sandwich technique. The second option I can use is using a dual cure or an auto cure composite. Either way, I want to concentrate only on the cervical portion of the restoration, but critically, I cannot use a material that needs to be light polymerized because the distance from where the light can be placed all the way down to that cervical floor, it's not really possible for the light to be able to cure that really well. So I have to use a material that I don't have to relay, rely on the light polymerization. The technique I like to use is I like to use an auto cure or a dual cure core material. I like using that over the glass ionomer or the resin ionomer materials because I like the way those materials flow and I like how, um, how intense and how hard those materials are. So that's my preference. But if you prefer a glass ionomer, then you would go ahead and load your glass ionomer into the cervical box like what I'm going to show next. But because I'm using a core buildup material, I'm going to etch the tooth with phosphoric acid for 15 to 20 seconds. So I'll inject my, my phosphoric acid down into the box area. I'll use a uh, multi brush to scrub it around for 15 to 20 seconds and then rinse it off. After I rinse off the etchant, I'm going to dry the tooth and then I'm going to use Concepsis. 
Consepsis is a material that is, it's a chlorohexidine and it's 2.2% chlorohexidine. So essentially about 10 times as strong as your Paradex. The, the, um, the chlorohexidine at 2.2%, it helps retard the breakdown of your bond structure, your hybridization process. So it slows down the degradation of your bond between your dentin and that hybrid layer that you're, that you're creating through your bonding technique. So I'll scrub the floor with consepsis for about 30 to, sec 30 to 60 seconds. Then I'll take off the excess. I want to leave the dentin moist, but not pooled with water or pooled with consepsis in this case. I'm then going to use an auto cure adhesive or an adhesive that has a simul cure agent to it. Because again, I'm not going to light cure my adhesive. So I'm going to use sort of a two part system. It'll be my adhesive with a catalyst and I will scrub down into the box for about 15 to 20 seconds. And then I will air dry again for about 15 to 20 seconds, but do not like here. I then follow up with my dual cure core buildup material. In this case, I use Cosmocore from Cosmodent and essentially I'm going to put my tip in and I'm going to inject my Cosmocore into this Toffelmeyer, into this matrix band area, up to a height that I would consider to sort of be an ideal class two. That is, I don't want to build it up too high, because if I build it up too high, it's going to be very difficult for me to then be able to go back and get a contact. If I don't build it up high enough, then it's going to be difficult for me to get a matrix band in there for the second step. So I want to build it to the ideal height. I like here my Cosmocore for 60 seconds. After 60 seconds, I let the Cosmocore set for a few additional minutes. I like doing that just to make sure that this core material is completely hardened and stabilized before I remove the matrix band. So after several minutes, good time to go do a hygiene check or just to take a break. I'll come back and then we'll remove the wedges or the Teflon tape or my cotton pellet and I'll remove my metal matrix band. And now I have my elevated margin. Now it should look like an, an ideal class two composite. So if you've taken the class two composite course from DOT, you'll know that I like to use a clear contoured matrix band. So I'm gonna place my ideal matrix band, place my wedge, and if you like using sectional rings, you could use a sectional ring at that point. And now I'm going to follow my class two protocol. I'll re-etch the tooth. I'll place my adhesive and I'll light cure. And then I'll start placing my direct composite. So here I am etching. After I etch, I place my adhesive, air thin, and light cure. Light cure that for 20 seconds. Now, if you've taken the class two course from DOT, you know that I like to change my class twos or turn my class twos into class ones. And the way I do that is I'll build the proximal wall first from occlusal to cervical, from buccal to lingual. So I'm gonna build it about one millimeter thick to build up that proximal wall. I'll like cure that for 20 seconds. And then I will add the rest of my nanofill or my microhybrid, whatever I use to create that wall. If you like using a microhybrid, that's great. Or if you like using a nanofill composite, that's awesome. I'm going to build in the rest of the contour. And that gives me my restored class two composite. If you want more tips on doing the class two, check out the, the DOT course, and that'll walk you through step by step on how I manage that. All right, after that class two is completed, I do a final light cure. I'm going to re remove the matrix band, remove the wedge. And that's how I'm able to create these two zones. You can see where I have my Cosmocore in the cervical portion, and then where I have my Nano Plus from, uh, from uh, Cosmodent that will come in and give me my class two, ideal class two composite. So I hope this is helpful. But remember, when you're going to do these deep subgingival um, interproximal caries, Think of them as doing as two steps. The first step is to elevate the margin into a more ideal class two situation. Take out the matrix band, get in a new contoured matrix band, start fresh, 
clean the tooth, etch it, rinse off your etch, place your adhesive, and then treat it like a normal class two. Okay, I hope you found that helpful. Thanks for joining us on DOT. Again, I hope you enjoyed this clinical mini tip and I look forward to seeing you in later classes.